You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for USA Today for various SEC-related things, but on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Vanderbilt Commodores. We're going to talk uh, the Vanderbilt offense, the Vanderbilt uh, defense, and we're going to give some final thoughts here uh, to wrap the show up. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everybody that we are free and available on all podcast platforms, and we're also on YouTube. All right, the offense for the Vanderbilt Commodores. So last time Kentucky played uh, Vanderbilt, it was on the road just a few games ago. 78-66 to 66 was the final score in favor of the Wildcats. Uh, offensively, it was one of the more efficient games that Kentucky has had stati- uh, statistically all season. Not necessarily from a pure shooting perspective, but in terms of like points per possession and different things like that. So last time Kentucky played the Commodores, it was a relatively solid game. The only issue was at one point, Kentucky was up by 28 in the second half, and it ended up ended up being a 12-point win. Um, I don't think we're going to see a letdown like that in this game. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I don't think we're going to see Kentucky build a lead and then blow over half of it. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get into some of the numbers here. So the offense for Vanderbilt, it's gotten somehow worse uh, than uh, it's somehow gotten worse than last time Kentucky played them. 68.6 points per game is 12th in the SEC. Uh, Vanderbilt scored 66 against Kentucky. Their pace of play has gotten even slower. They are now 255th nationally in adjusted tempo. Uh, Vanderbilt, not a very fast-paced team. Defensive-minded, we'll get to the defensive numbers here in just a little bit, but offensively, uh, not very efficient whatsoever. Uh, they don't put up a lot of shots either. They're, they put up about 55 and a half field goal attempts per game, which is good for 13th in the SEC, so next to last. So they're 12th in the SEC in points per game. They're next to last in, uh, in, in shots attempted, and they're one of the worst teams in, a, in the country in tempo. Uh, they do take a lot of threes, though. They put up 26 a game, which is tied for third in the SEC, uh, and they, uh, they make 14 and a half free throws per game, which is tied for fifth in the SEC. So if we're going to talk about something that they do well, uh, they put up a lot of threes, and uh, they get to the free throw line uh, relatively often. But overall, this offense is just... it's And, and I put this actually down on my notes whenever we played Vanderbilt a few a uh, few weeks ago is the Vanderbilt offense is akin to their football brethren because the the Vanderbilt offense in football is just I mean it's it's the it's the worst of the worst and Vanderbilt's offense in basketball is not necessarily the worst of the worst but they are actually last in a lot of different categories we're going to get to that in a second but first stylistically I want to remind everybody if you did not watch that episode the preview episode if you didn't watch Kentucky play Vanderbilt uh, just a few games ago, stylistically, X and, X's and O's wise, Jerry Stackhouse, the Vanderbilt head coach, runs a motion offense uh, and involves a set that he uses a lot known as horns. And in this set, uh, forwards set up at the elbows while shooters uh, space the floor out on the wing. The ball is then passed to one of the forwards, and from there, the perimeter players can cut, space, or set off-ball screens to try and get themselves open. The set allows for different guys to touch the ball within uh, an offensive possession and when run accurate, accurately, it can be very, very effective. So Baylor runs uh, a similar set uh, very commonly. They they run a, they won't run a, a weave motion offense. They run horns. They run different stuff like that. So Baylor is a good example of how to run a motion offense efi- uh, efficiently. Vanderbilt may be the best of, uh, definition of how to run it poorly. Um, they play iso ball a lot within their motion offense, which is weird because if you're trying to cut and get players open and pass the ball around, you would think that shots would lead off of that. That would be assisted baskets, but it's not the case in the Vanderbilt offense. They'll get one or two passes in, and then they'll tell a guy to work with the ball, to tell him to go create an isolation. And it really didn't work against Kentucky until late in the second half. Uh, although I will say, the fact that Vanderbilt got to 66 points when the Wildcats played them uh, is surprising because the shots that they took, some of them were really tough. In isolation, I did not credit Vanderbilt's scores enough. I said that Scottie Pippen Jr. was the only one that could knock down shots. I, I still think that's relatively true, but you go back and watch that game, and Scottie made a lot of really tough shots, and there were some other tough uh, twos and threes taken uh, from Vanderbilt players as well. And I had it on my notes whenever whenever they played 
that Vanderbilt only has one shooter. And technically, when you go and look at the game, I mean, Scotty was literally the only reason that Vanderbilt was in that game. Uh, it, it, but, but there were other scores that were impressive at different moments, in my opinion. To go over some more numbers here real, real quick. So I mentioned Vanderbilt playing ISO ball, right? So that means not a lot of assists. Well, they're dead last in the, in, in the SEC in assists per game at 11.2. They had nine assists versus Kentucky. Uh, they shoot about 41.2% from the floor, which is last in the SEC. Uh, and they shot 42% versus Kentucky. Uh, they don't make a lot of their free throws. They made 60% against the Wildcats. Um, they shoot almost 32% from three, which is ninth in the SEC. They shot 40%. They were 12 of 30 against the Wildcats. And again, like I said a minute ago, I don't think we're going to see the Vanderbilt offense score as much as they did at home. I don't think we're going to see Kentucky really allow them to put up a lot of points in this game. 34.3 rebounds per game is also last in the SEC, which is just matchup nightmare written all over it for, for the Commodores because Kentucky has the best uh, rebounding margin in the country. In fact, uh, Kentucky uh, allowed 26 rebounds whenever they played the Commodores, and Kentucky finished that game against Vanderbilt with a plus 16 rebounding margin. I would expect similar things in this game. I don't expect this Vanderbilt offense to be getting a lot of offensive rebounds, getting a lot of boards in general. Uh, I, again, I really think that this this team is going to struggle offensively uh, against the Wildcats. 12.8 turnovers per game is 7th in the SEC, uh, so about average. They don't really turn the ball over. They had 8 versus Kentucky. Uh, they may have a couple more in this game. Maybe a key. We'll get to that later on in the show. And I put this down on my notes uh, just a few games ago, and I'll say it again. If I'm Kentucky's defense, and I'm looking at some of those numbers where, where half of their major statistical categories, they, they are last in the SEC in, I'm saying let's go. I'm saying this is a fantastic matchup. They're terrible on offense. Their defense couldn't hold us last game. They probably won't be able to hold us again. I am very excited if I'm Kentucky playing in this game. So three key contributors. So we talked about three key guys last time. We're going to go over the same ones, and we're going to go over what they did against the Wildcats. Um, and I kept the same ones. I thought about changing some of them, but I kept the same ones because they are still three of Vanderbilt's better players, even though two of these guys didn't play well against the, uh, the Wildcats. So Scotty Pippen Jr. scored 32 points, literally almost half the points Vanderbilt scored whenever they played the Wildcats. He had two rebounds and four assists to go along with that as well. Leads the team in points, assists, and steals. Uh, if he doesn't ch- take the shot, typically there's one other guy that will, and that's Jordan Wright, senior forward. Uh, he doesn't really shoot well, uh, much much at all, and he did not shoot well at all against uh, Kentucky. In fact, he didn't score. Had four rebounds and an assist. Uh, Trey Thomas, the backup forward, uh, kind of had to carry the load for Jordan Wright. He, uh, or he scored 14 points against the Wildcats coming off the bench. Miles Stute, or Stute, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm Honestly, frankly, I don't care. Uh, at least not right now. I know that sounds arrogant. I'm sorry. Um, 8.6 points per game. Uh, scored six points, four rebounds, and had an assist against Kentucky. Shot two of 11 uh, from the floor. He actually does shoot well, shooting over 40% from three and 44.5% from the floor. So, uh, Miles could be a player to potentially look out for. So, Scotty Pippen Jr., Jordan Wright, Miles uh, Stute. I'm going to go with that or Stoop. Um So those are the three guys offensively, but again, I don't expect this Commodores team to come out blazing iso ball in Rupp Arena with the way that Kentucky's playing right now. I just don't think Kentucky's defense is going to let that happen. And we're going to get to some of the questions later on in in the show, just talking about what can Kentucky do overall to kind of shut this Vanderbilt team down. We're going to talk about the defense here in a second as well. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Built Bar. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, you need to make sure that you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easy to stick to your New Year's resolution because it tastes so good, you'll actually want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky, waxy, or uh, just plain taste like a chemical spill. Built Bars are also covered in 100% real chocolate, and they taste fantastic. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You can compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. There's so many different flavors to choose from as well. You could go coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and they've got so many different more 
uh, outside of that. In fact, Built is always coming out with new limited time flavors, so check out Built.com often to see what's new. And you can go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, you can go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, moving along here on the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. If you're watching on YouTube, would really appreciate it if you subscribe. About 80 to 82% of people that watch my videos are not actually subscribed. And I know you've probably heard YouTubers say that a lot. Um, but but genuinely, it, w- it would lean, mean a lot to me if you, if you subscribed. I would genuinely um, appreciate it. So the defense. One of the better units in the SEC overall, giving up about 64.5 points per game. Uh, Vanderbilt's defense is what's carried them so far this season. And I I guess you have to define carried, right? Because it's not like they've been carried to anything special. I mean, Vanderbilt's, let's not not try and misconstrue things. They're one of the worst teams in in the SEC. And, I mean, it doesn't really feel like they've been carried to much, but still the defense is there. Um, so we like to do some. Uh, we like to drop some interesting statistics here uh, with the defense. And last time we talked about Vanderbilt and how they held the majority of their opponents that actually could score to underneath their average points per game. Uh, I've got a different statistic here for you. Vanderbilt is two and five in their last seven games. Go figure. They suck. In their five losses, the Commodores are giving up sixty nine point eight points per game, which is less than they give up on average in SEC play. So what does that tell you? If they are, if their defense is playing better than they do on average over these last seven games, and they're two and five, what does that indicate? The defense is pretty good, and the offense stinks. Uh, and th- there's really no other way to cut it. This offense has really held this unit back, and it's a shame that they could not get somebody in the post this season to play well for them offensively. Because if they had Pippen and somebody in the post, they would be really fun to watch. And I, that that's that's not me being dramatic or anything. Like, they would be entertaining. They may not be great, but they would be really fun to watch because their defense is going to be there. Uh, again, like I mentioned, giving up 64.7 points per game. Uh, Kentucky scored 78. They're going to score more than that in this game. Uh, Vanderbilt went from 90th in defensive efficiency whenever we played them to 56th in defensive efficiency. So their defense, is, it, efficiency-wise, has gotten better. Their offense is just kind of, it's, it's, it's as bad as it's going to be this year, I think. Ninth in the SEC in steals per game. Uh, Vanderbilt had seven against Kentucky. Uh, Vanderbilt is also 12th in the SEC in blocks per game. And uh, Vanderbilt had five against Kentucky. Last time Kentucky played Vanderbilt, the off, uh, again, Kentucky's offense had one of the most efficient games that they've had all season long. Uh, Kentucky only had eight turnovers in that game. And I really think that we're going to see something similar in this matchup, I think that something that really bothered Vanderbilt was the pace of play that Kentucky had, and I think that's something we're going to talk about in just a little bit, is can Kentucky do what they did again against Vanderbilt? And I talked about this on yesterday's show, talking about things that this Kentucky team can do better before the postseason hits. And I think one of the things that they can do better is increasing their tempo just a little bit. Now, they play very well in transition. They're known for that. But when you look at some of their statistics and you actually go and watch, there are opportunities where Kentucky and Severe Wheeler specifically can dictate the offense in transition and he can operate it and it can play very, very well. I think in this game, defensively, Vanderbilt is not going to be able to stop what Kentucky did to Kansas, which was playing well in transition and consistent rim attacks. I think we are going to see Sheebway have several rim runs in this game. I think we're going to see Kentucky try and spread the ball around in transition, maybe get Grady involved. Davion Mintz getting out of his his shooting slump. I've harped on that. I think that's going to be important in this game as well. I believe he played very well uh, whenever the Commodores played, whenever he played the Commodores last time. But defensively, overall, while the the numbers may be relatively impressive in terms of efficiency and the points per game they allow and the fact that they're not winning games, but the defense is still there. Talk about, I don't necessarily think that's great coaching. That's an indication of great coaching, but you've got to be able to get fight out of your kids if they're they're losing and still playing defense. I think that's impressive. Um, So so overall, we'll we'll get to final scores and and stuff here in a minute, but overall, I just do not expect uh, Vanderbilt to be able to hold Kentucky, and I think it's going to be worse uh, than what we saw uh, in uh, in Nashville last time whenever the, the Wildcats played. And by the way, if you have a final score prediction for this game, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. If you've got thoughts on this game, uh, I would love to hear it. If you are listening on podcast, if you want to follow the, sh- the, the socials and, and hit me with a final score uh, prediction, 
I'd love to talk to you about it. We're going to talk about some final thoughts here, and we're going to talk about what we talked about last time, parameters, different things like that, uh, coming up in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Bet Online. There might be less football being played, but BetOnline.net has way more odds and info for this playoff season. From scores, totals, player performance props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, BetOnline is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. And it's not just football. BetOnline.net's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports, Right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Questions, parameters. Let's get to it. So, what this? These are the things that we asked last time. Can Kentucky speed Vanderbilt up? Obviously, Vanderbilt plays at a very slow tempo. I said that last time it would be a bad matchup for Vanderbilt if Kentucky could push the pace. They did a little bit in that game. Kentucky won handily. I think they need to do the same thing today. I think they need to push the pace a little bit. Do we see Vanderbilt turn the ball over uh, a little bit more than they did last time? I asked, how does Ty Ty handle the Vanderbilt pressure? And then how does Vanderbilt handle, handle Kentucky's pressure? Do we see Vanderbilt turn the, the ball over a little bit more? And do we see Kentucky continue to limit turnovers like they did in that game? Both teams only had eight. I would like to see Kentucky win the turnover battle in this matchup. Um, uh, and then we, something else that we asked, over under two and a half cuts to Shaden Sharp on the bench. Um, I don't believe we've got many, if any, in that contest, but I definitely think we're going to have some questions asked at the end of this game if Sharp doesn't play. In my opinion, tomorrow is the best opportunity that Kentucky is going to have to play Shaden Sharp all season. Tomorrow's it. And if he does not play, it's not like I'm going to be angry. It's not going to be disappointed. I mean, if we win, without him, we win. But for his sake... I think it's beneficial for him to play tomorrow. So does Shaden Sharp play? Yes, no. Uh, I, I I hope, but I, I don't know. If, you, if you've got thoughts on it, would love to uh, hear them in the comments below. All right, parameters here. Can Kentucky shoot the ball well? Well, they shot the ball well against Vanderbilt last time, scored 78 points, so I think it's going to work out again. Can Kentucky have decent shot selection? This is something interesting because Keon Brooks right now is riding a high, career high points against Kansas, uh, with 27, if Kentucky wants to lean on him and Ty Ty again to try and knock down all these mid-range jumpers, does that continue? Or do these two players hit a little bit of a cold streak? And therefore, uh, that affects their, their shot selection overall. I think that's something to watch in this game is how is Keon Brooks utilized after having a really good game? Does he continue to play well? Or does he go back to averaging 12 points a game? Who knows? We'll have to see. Can Kentucky play well in transition, both offensively and defensively? I don't think Vanderbilt's going to be pushing the pace in this game, so I would say yes for the most part. I think Kentucky should be knowledgeable about getting back and, and making sure Scottie Pippen Jr. is locked up. And offensively, I think Kentucky is going to push the pace, and they're going to have a lot of success, especially given the fact that this game uh, is at home. Can Kentucky protect the rim? I think they can. Uh, I don't think that this Vanderbilt team is going to be looking at a lot of different shots at the rim. I don't think they're going to shoot a high clip. Even though they didn't get any blocks last game, I don't expect them to get a ton this game. Yeah, I would say Kentucky's going to protect the rim. And then one final question here. Can Kentucky shut Scottie Pippen Jr. down? Obviously 32 points, like I've mentioned several times today. Can the Wildcats shut him down? Because if they take him down, the offense for Vanderbilt collapses. And, and again, ISO balls just not worked for the for the uh, the Commodores this season. So final score predictions again. If you've got them, put them in the comments below. I think Kentucky wins this game handily. Um, I think that Vanderbilt, uh, you know, while they may be decent in certain areas overall, this is just not their year. They lost to the they lost to Kentucky at home. I think they're going to lose on the road. Eighty five to fifty nine is my final score prediction. I think Kentucky runs away with this one, and I think they keep their foot on the gas, unlike they did. Uh, against the Commodores uh, in Nashville just a few short games ago. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore, and you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. I will see you all tomorrow to hopefully recap a Wildcats win. Have a good day, and God bless.